Hello everyone, it's Denise at Something Beautiful Handcrafts and um, this is kind of how things always start out. I see I'm going to make something, promise to make it, time goes by, start making it and I don't record any of it and I have to kind of talk through it so I didn't really feel like making a video today but if I don't start this video I'm going to wind up in the middle of the video trying to explain to you what I did. So. Uh, this right here is the tool, the crinoline, for the third set of tresses. And I'll give you some pictures of the second set, which I absolutely positive did not take a video of doing any of those ones. Uh, but I decided that I wanted a slightly longer uh, skirt this time, skirt portion of the dress. And I was just kind of sitting here and figured I'd go ahead and put some tool underneath it to see what happens. So this is the longer tool and uh, it was just pretty much wrapped around the doll. And uh, that's kind of it. I will fit the waist here either by pulling it in the drawstring or I'll make a waistband for it. I don't know. I have to figure that one out. Okay, so anyway, um, I want it to be longer than the pattern because, of course, these Pleasant Company patterns are all sized for children. So sometimes they usually come either right below the knee or at or slightly at the knee. And for the, at least for this one dress coming up, once I make this one dress, I'll decide about the other four. I want it to be a little longer. So that's probably about uh, two inches, maybe. That's about a two inch difference. Well, here we go, so I decided to make it a little longer. Um, we've got, let's say about seven inches. Okay, so it's about seven inches. And the original one is a lot closer to five okay so basically I'm gonna get myself seven inches worth of material here and cut out that and then start with the bottom which I know is a little odd but that'll give me a good idea of uh, how the skirt is going to look a little more ball gowny and then what I did is I switched I switched from Samantha's party dress, the cranberry dress, uh, to the pinafore dress. And actually, yes, there is a difference in the pattern. The bodice of that dress is longer and it's bigger. And of course, the sleeves are long. These are short cap sleeve. So I'm gonna try the cap sleeve out and see. So I'll have a dress up sleeveless a cap sleeve and a long sleeve that's gonna be cool okay so that's where I'm gonna start at and I just really need to go ahead and film that or next time you see the video you'll be like in the middle of the video and it might not make as much sense so now this frees me to go ahead and cut the fabric and start uh, stitching up um, the, the dress it's you know it's a mock-up because this is like $2.99 fabric from Joann's, but it's really not a mock-up because if it works, it's a dress I can keep. So I'm not like recommending, you know, if you're just testing this out, um, you probably do want to do a mock-up, get yourself some nicely cheap muslin. I have plenty of that. Uh, but in this case, I'm like on dress number eight. So the mock-up is going to be the dress. It'll be just fine. I wish you could see all this fuzz like all over my phone. Um, these particular fabrics, um, they shed glitter everywhere. So um, probably not gonna wanna work with this fabric again. Anyway, now this is my favorite part of the whole operation. Uh, well, yeah, I'm gonna say the second favorite part is putting it together. But uh, when all the pieces are cut out and basically it's like a jigsaw puzzle uh, and that's essentially how I think of sewing. 
um, it's a puzzle piece, or at least when I'm using patterns, even when I'm making my own patterns, it's still like I'm putting a puzzle piece together. And so I know what the whole is supposed to look at. Look at, you know, you have the picture in front of you, just like you would a jigsaw puzzle. And I know it's supposed to look like this, or I mean, it's supposed to look like a dress or a, a shirt or a pair of pants. Um, all things that, you know, I'm familiar with in everyday life. And I am just uh, turning the pieces and kind of working them out and putting them together to make this new shape. And it absolutely positively does matter the order in which you put these guys together. Some pieces become harder to put together if you put them together in the wrong order. Some just become a lot easier, of course. So some become almost impossible to put together properly if you don't put them in the right order. Okay, so there's our sleeve bands, our neck band, which I made longer uh, than the actual pattern because the last set of dresses, I seemed like I had to make the neck band longer than the um, pattern piece. I'm not really sure why. It might have to do with the way this pattern was scanned because it is a PDF and not the original pattern. And there might have been some reduction in size that was not accounted for. I don't know, but I did. At any rate. So let's get that out of the way. And here we go with the bodice front and the two bodice back sides. And those are going to go together like bodices always go. You know, just basically, they go like that. They're going to do their bodice thing. No surprise here. And then I'm going to attach them that way. Attach them to the sides. You know, the quarter inch press, press, press. And then we have our sleeves. And we've got our markings. Like for life of me, I don't know what happened to my pen. Uh, so I've just been poking the holes and because this is that type of satin I can just poke the holes in and it basically retains its shape um, And so I know where to put the gathers at so I'm gonna gather that I'm gonna do this by hand actually uh, Because my machine has been causing runs in the satin and it could be because it's just that kind of cheap satin It could be because I need to change my sewing needle. So at some point uh, maybe before the week is out, I will change the sewing needle on the machine. I don't think I've done it in a while, and it needs to be done no matter what. Um, and then uh, this will be sewn to this point here and uh, gathered along the entire edge and the cuff placed. And I did not do Velcro. I have not done any Velcro. I'm not intending on doing any Velcro. So I'll add snaps or ribbons or something in that spot. And then after I prepare the sleeves, I will fit them into the arm side and stitch along underneath the arm down the sides of the bodice. And then that's where I'm going to join you again at some point so that I can gather up the skirt part and uh, fit it onto the dress and then I'm gonna fit it onto the crinoline and I will adjust the, the crinoline from there. Welcome back. So I completely cannot even remember what it was that I last recorded. Uh, that's the problem with recording these um, so far apart, having multiple projects. So I'm not really working on one project. Um, if you find that you're actually interested, I could just do one project at a time and completely follow through all the way step by step. And that's always about it. Like I said, I'm working on multiple projects. Uh, so I shoot segments of these projects as I move along and they, they take a couple weeks sometimes and I forget where I'm at. Okay, so uh, depending on what I told you last, in the last segment, we're on the silver dresses now. I've done the pink and the gold and here is the silver. And I think I told you how much I hate working with this satin. And honestly, it's been a while since I worked with any satin. So I don't know if it's just this one in particular because it's cheaper 
people where it's all satin, but it just, it's like phrase city. So I'm always fighting these frays. Like I, I can't even, I just barely cut it and it's fraying all over the place before I get to it. So at any rate, um, this, I should lay it with this dress. Okay, so I made two short gowns and two long gowns. And this is the first, actually, no, this is not, this is the second. Okay, so maybe I made three short gowns. This is the the actual length of Sam's pattern. I think I increased it maybe by an inch. And here's the first short gown. This is the second short gown. I went ahead and bought the tool. I've been up in the air about it, and I absolutely love it. Um, it's got glitter in the glitter shads. And because it's tool, it, I don't really think it was possible for me to fix this glitter what I would have normally done is spray things with hairspray or spray them with a fixative but the tool I think it would show through the tool if I did that which actually might not be all that bad looking to have kind of a frosted look but I'm just gonna have to deal with the glitter it'll be all right just keep my hands away from my face I'm wearing glasses not contacts anymore so that helps anyway there's the tool it was absolutely great I'm really happy about it uh, and I'm gonna have to go back to the dollar store and I'm going to go ahead and put some tool over the gold ones. A few of them anyway, like two or three of them. All right, now, I didn't want to repeat what I did with the other one because I want to make each one slightly different in some way. So I've decided in this case, I'm going to put the tool at the bottom here and I want to ruffle it. I'm going to ruffle it and I'm going to have a little overlay at the top. So you can see that gap and then hanging from the bottom here. So I just have to decide uh, how much tool I'm going to need. Now what I did with the one down there is I took the length of the skirt and tripped it. And that's what I got from there. So I'm thinking for here, I'm going to take the circumference of this skirt and I think I want it really roughly at the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and triple that too. Now, if this had been regular fabric, I would do the gathering ruffling um, on the machine, either with a gathering stitch or with my ruffler. I actually do have a ruffler for this machine. Look at that. Okay, but in this case, this tool just seems so light and I don't want to rip it. So I'm going to gather it by hand and I'm going to leave the edges raw. Uh, for the ballerina outfit, which I can't really remember if I made a video or not. I don't think I, I don't think it's appeared in the videos. But even anyway, for the ballerina outfit, I doubled the tool so there were no rough edges, but that was a much stiffer tool. It's like a crinoline tool. And so that was stiffer. And but in this case, I've been seeing a lot of uh, high-end dresses uh, over the past couple weeks, like at Saks Fifth Avenue and stuff. And they're using a lot of raw edge tool, and that's cool. They're doing it. I'm gonna go ahead and do it too. So I'm going to go ahead and put the ruffle on, and then I will get back to you. You know what? Before I say that, let me say this because it's, chances are what will happen is I'll put the ruffle on and then start doing something else I never get back to. So let me tell you about this too. Okay, these two, I got two of these and these are the full length ball gowns. And so I, I just really want to do something really cool with them. I think I might really jazz them up, but I don't really know. And I guess I should mention this. Uh, if you look at Okay, so the first set of dresses, the first set of dresses, I did not use a sleeve at all. And I doubled the bodice front and back to create a nice lining for clean edges so I wouldn't have edges like this on the inside of that dress. For the second set of dresses, I used the actual sleeve for Sam's dress, which is a full length sleeve, uh, which I didn't really like. I just didn't like the full limb sleeve. I actually kind of prefer the, the no sleeve dress for the dolls. So for this one, I use the short sleeve from Sam's birthday dress. 
I can't remember which dress it actually is, but it's the one with the red stripes and the pinafore, the lacy pinafore dress, I think is what it's called. And these are cute too. They're okay, but they still weren't what I was looking for. What I really wanted was the ruffle sleeve off Molly's dress. But I didn't want to deal with all those small layers because it's a three layer ruffle um, in this satin since it's just kind of an icky, stringy satin. Instead, I used the short sleeves off the Pixie Fair uh, dress. Oh, I wish I could remember who the designer of that dress is. I'll put it in the bottom or across the comments when I remember. But I used that dress and uh, use the sleeves from there. Oh, it's, it's called the Marsha, Marsha, Marsha dress. So at least you'll know the name of it. And put it on here. And I absolutely love it. This is the look I was going for. I love those sleeves. Reminds me of a pink taffeta dress I had with crinoline. Uh, and these kind of sleeves look just like this when I was a little girl in the 80s. So that's pretty cool. All right, so anyway, the longer ones, I do have these bling blings. And so I'm going to put them somewhere on there somehow. Haven't decided yet. And I might put some tool swoops. So uh, either you'll see that in the video or I'll suddenly have an in party video where I've done it also already and then I'm kind of explaining it to you. Uh, we'll see.